Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00 and in today's Project Mjolnir update we address some minor setbacks, we look into some specifics of the HUD interface for the HoloLens 2 and we look at progress for the helmet thus far. Keep watching, commenting, liking, sharing and remember that the GoFundMe is still taking donations so if you can spare it, it'll help this project keep moving forward. Link as always is in the description. So let's take a look at the progress for Project Mjolnir. Hey everybody, welcome back to Installation Zero Zero. Um, I got a little bit of bad news, but a lot of good news. Um, so let's get the let's get the little bit of bad news out of the way first. So, as you're aware, I had the um, the environment suit, the Spartan BDU, that is going to be stylized after the Spartan Four BDU. Um, I had all intentions on getting that uh, made by a, a seamstress costumer um, to make it as lore accurate as humanly possible, um, literally a, like a one-for-one -one remake of the Spartan 4 BDU. Uh, I am unfortunately received an email um, from the the, the, the the people I'd approached and uh, they've unfortunately not been able to take the project up uh, due to mainly scheduling conflicts um, and also um, they they feel they might not be able to meet the needs of the project. So it's a, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a minor setback. Um, certainly not the end of the world. Um, and actually, in 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 the email, they actually referred me to several of their of their um, of uh, several of their colleagues in in the same field, but different organisations that may be able to take the project up. So I'm endeavouring to contact all of those um, to see if if they can pick the project up and continue. Um, and and get the the BDU developed um, properly. So a little bit of a letdown, but I understand completely completely from a, from a from a professional point of view and from a uh, from a, a project's uh, development point of view, especially just scheduling. I mean, I'm aware, I'm very aware that the, the company I approached are are highly esteemed um, and are in high demand. Um, and have projects coming in and out all the time for various different works on YouTube and the film industry and, and a few others. So completely understand. It's, a, it's you know, it, and I appreciate the the professional courtesy of being able to say, look, you know, sorry, we can't we can't pick this up properly. Um, but here's some contact details. So my, minor setback, not the end of the world. Um, so I'll update you with the with with how the BDU's going. When when I've spoken to these other these other um, these other people these other companies, so now that's out of the way, the good news: uh, the Hololens HUD system overlay. Um, I've been in contact with a with a, a fellow called Chris, who is um, much more experienced in the Unity engine and the um, the mixed reality tool set. Uh, for developing applications for the HoloLens than I am. Um, I, as I'm sure anyone who's been watching these videos is aware, um, I've effectively had to try to teach myself HoloLens, the HoloLens um, environment, the Unity engine, and, and everything else that goes into developing applications if I was going to lone, lone wolf this and make the, make the HUD systems for the HoloLens work. Um, I'd be a fool if I th if I thought that I could do all of the, the whole project on my own. I can't. Of course, I can't. It's it's only logical. There is there are aspects and and skill sets that I don't have experience in or access to. Um, so, as a as a sort of a project manager, so to speak, it would be foolhardy of me to assume that I'd better do this alone. I can't. Of course, I can't. So, yeah. So Chris has been um, looking into. The, the HUD systems and has um, sent me over something which uh, will allow me to demonstrate uh, the HUD to you um, so you can see the HUD overlay and and how it will work so I'll just I'll bring that up now so 
just get sorted with the hollow lens a minute. Bear with. So, we now have the hollow lens up and running. As you can see, we're getting the gesture controls appearing. But of course, the main reason that I wanted to, I was just de detecting the area, the main reason I wanted to do this is to be able to show you this. So, this is still quite crude uh, at the moment. Um, but we are getting there gradually. Christ, that was bright. So I'll explain a little bit about you know sort of how this came to be shortly. There we go. There we have. There we have the HUD with a targeting reticle in the middle. Well, a sort of targeting reticle, so to speak. But um, this is actually the HUD overlay fixed to the display. So as I look around, it moves with me. Um, and the dot there in the middle is actually just a like a point focus. But you get the idea um, of perhaps replacing that with... Um, so the HoloLens tracks eye movement. Um, so in theory, we could have like a secondary targeting sensor, targeting reticle, so to, so to speak, that tracks the eye position and um, although this one isn't tracking my eye position it kind of gives you a feel for it at least but um, yeah this is very simple a very simple system built in unity it's literally a canvas so it's the it's the p uh, it's the ping image that I tend to use on uh, my thumbnails and stuff like that uh, but it's literally applied as a canvas image that is fixed to the um, the d display and I can I can see this um, in impressive um, aspect ratio to be fair um, there's still some tweaking that needs to be done with sizing we've, we've noticed some size discrepancies between um, this unit that I'm using and the unit that was um, that the uh, Chris the guy who actually developed the unity app for this there seems to be a discrepancy on resolution so when he has this interface up he can't see um, it, it clips off some of the edges of the HUD interface but for me I can see all of that but it's not full screen display so oops no I don't want to shut down the device um, but it's not a full screen it's not a full screen display I can see all four corners but it's like I say it's not it's not fully realized I was saying that I might not be able to see all four corners but Yeah, it's still clever. It still gets across the idea that the HoloLens can do what we say it can do. It can actually display information over your field of view. So, yeah, this is pretty cool, I think. But yeah, back to back to the the, the sort of the more deep information. So on, on top of the basic HUD overlay, which obviously you've seen now, it's um. Over time, I'm I'm probably going to scale that back because I I mean you'll notice in in all get all the games that you play the the HUD is very uh, the information that you need like the motion tracker what weapon you've got equipped um, your ammunition count um, your targeting reticle uh, your energy shields that's quite prominent but the actual HUD overlay itself is much less pronounced um, so over time I'll probably scale that back dramatically um, but. As far as other functionality is concerned, so obviously at the moment it's just a passive overlay. It doesn't, it doesn't really do a lot. Um, it just demonstrates that it can display a HUD overlay. Um, so over time, um, we're looking at developing the targeting system. I've I've found that the the Hololens is actually it tracks your eye movement as well. So I quite like the idea of having effectively kind of two targeting reticles one is actually tracking your eyes at all times so wherever you're looking in the HUD it will display a, like a much less pronounced maybe circle to show where your eye focuses but then when you've got a weapon equipped uh, it would give you a targeting reticle for that and then obviously when you're actually lining up looking at the, at the, at the towards the the target so to speak the weapon targeting reticle will line up because you'll better move your weapon to accommodate and your vision will be and I just like the idea that those two factors merge and become a single, you know. Um, so I might, I know that's a little bit more than the HUD would normally give, but I, I like the idea of exploring that. But we'll, we'll play with the technique as we go. So as from a, a targeting standpoint, I've explained before what we'll do is we'll use 
Uh, the HoloLens has actually got an infrared sensor in the front of the of the visor. Uh, so it will use these little infrared nodes, effectively, um, that you put onto the rail of a weapon. Um, I've, I've recently picked up a, a Nerf um, a Halo Infinite Bulldog a Nerf gun from um, Amazon. And I decided to tear it to pieces and spray it black and I've, I'm, st I'm still it's still a working process process i've not i've not finished this yet it still needs um like a nice gun metal finish and a little bit more wear and tear and some yeah some weathering but um the idea i've lost one of the bits of the handles there the idea is that so this what i love about this is that this one actually has a rail um on the top of the weapon there we go so you've got the rail at the top there so what i like about that is that we can effectively put infrared node at one end of the rail and at the other end of the rail measure the distance between those two so that becomes a known a known variable and then what the hololens can do is because it then knows the distance between these two and it will be able to track the distance between it and each one of the of nodes separately it can triangulate the positions once it triangulates the positions it understands the orientation of the weapon and understands where you're aiming it which means that then when you uh, when you have the hololens in place and you have a weapon up and it's tracking those, it gives you the target reticle on your HUD and when it would move based on where you're aiming. Pretty straightforward. So, aiming, relatively straightforward. Smart scoping, again, I've, I think I've explained before, so if we have a weapon that's scoped, we can have a camera effectively fitted, um, either with a mirror or prism, um, uh, so you can still look through it with your own eye, but the camera would look through as well. Um, and that camera can effectively be that can communicate to the HoloLens via wide eye, um, which is basically wireless uh, Wi-Fi for displays, wide wireless display, wide eye, um, and display that view in your vision. Um, I've already experimented with the HoloLens, and it can do that. I mean, you can you can display YouTube videos on the HoloLens, um, as I demonstrated in an earlier update video. You can play Xbox on the HoloLens if you wanted. A um, little bit of calibration to do it, but it can be done. So. That would allow smart scoping, even like um, the, the HUD zoom that you have with weapons that don't have a, a, a zoom involved. The HUD zoom um, can be achieved by a, a camera mounted on the helmet itself, um, which may even have its own optical zoom on it. Um, and effectively zoom, accessing that, you get that uh, superimposed in your vision. And if you zoom in, it, it zooms in and, in, you know, and you get a zoomed aspect ratio in your vision. So HUD zoom works as well. The weapon itself can be tracked with an RFID chip. So you can put an RFID chip into um, the weapon that basically just has basically information about what weapon it is. Um, and then when you have the when you're holding it, the RFID chip will be detected by um, an RFID reader, either in the wrist or in the palm, um, that would then tell the HoloLens what weapon you're holding. That would allow you to have like the little icon of the Bulldog display on your HUD or the assault rifle display on your HUD. Um, and I've actually got for the Arduino, I actually have, there we go. So that's an RFID chip. I can crack that open inside there. It's just a, literally a chip and a coil of, of, um, of wire, which is how it detects. And then you actually have the RFID reader. It's quite a large chip. You can get you can get smaller and more flexible ones than this. So um, that would basically tell the Hololens what weapon you've got equipped. And what's great about that as well is that if you if you then harness that weapon um, or holster that weapon, put it on your back or whatever, um, you can have that same Arfid chip um, a reader in the back. So when you do um, holster it, it detects that that's now holstered. Um, which means you're no longer holding it. It's now no longer a primary weapon. It's a secondary, so it would switch that weapon to be kind of, you know, your, your smaller secondary weapon um, from a graphical display point. It's relatively straightforward and, and intuitive. Again, Arduino powered. So the Arduino is a, is a microcontroller, a microcomputer. Um, you can get sort of credit card sized Arduinos, or the ones I will be using are actually the, uh, the Arduino Nanos, which are tiny little microcomputers so that's a really simple um, simple way to do it um, I'm trying to keep the design philosophy of, it, of keep it simple stupid the more complex you make it the more things can go wrong can, can fail um, uh, and as far as ammunition count there's two ways I think viably that they that, that could be done one obviously inside the magazine there's a spring that holds um, the rounds in the um, in the magazine and as you fire one obviously that spring 
is pushing the rounds up into the into the weapon. So as that spring expands, you get obviously a distance change. That distance change can then translate with a sensor or something along those lines to a round fired. Um, the alternative is literally put something either in, more more than likely at the, at the muzzle of the barrel. Um, so it'll be like a, a muzzle fixture uh, that will have a sensor in it. So as a round effectively passes between those sensors and breaks the, the, line, the line of sight between those two sensors, it registers that a round is passed through it. That translates to a graphical change on the HUD saying you have fired a round. Again, it wouldn't, I'm tr trying not to over-engineer. The simpler the better. The um, And as far as the... the um, the motion sensor, obviously that's another big aspect of, of the HUD systems. Um, I'm starting with sonar. Seems counterintuitive, but it, it makes sense once you sort of think about it. So the way that the um, the way that that will work is effectively we have a sonar module, like this is a, again an Arduino sonar, sonar module. Um, this will be mounted either on the helmet or I can mount maybe two of them, because in, in, the, in the books I believe it's said that, uh, that, that the um, quantum mirrors for the, um, for the radar are actually in the pauldrons. So I'd be tempted maybe down the line, mount them on the shoulders, um, and then you have like over arc, uh, overlapping arcs of 180 degrees on either side, so to speak, um, or more if we need them. And what that does is it sends out a high frequency sound that bounces off of objects, comes back, and from that you can get a, dis a feel of distance, of things of, of a proximity, basically how far away things are, um, and you can display that on a very simple radial graphic on the HUD. Um, it wouldn't track like it, it does in um, in the games, where you have an individual little red dot showing that's a that's an enemy unit, an individual yellow dot that's a friendly unit. Um, it would actually be more of a actually more 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 the way it was explained in uh, the flood, um, the book, the flood, um, where when the flood um, the, when the flood infection forms were approaching Master Chief, uh, it, it, his motion sets are just flushed red there was no one point there was no one target it would just flushed red it would look more like that there are examples on youtube of people using sonar with an arduino with a simple like kind of quote unquote radar overlay that's what i'm aiming for for the for the motion sensor and finally for the um for the hud or another key piece of information for the hud is um the energy shield uh, now obviously the energy shield bar we won't have energy shields, we're not quite there technologically, technologically speaking yet, but health monitor on the other hand, that's doable. I know that's more akin to Halo CE, but um, I'm still thinking keep it in the center like the like the shield bar is, but instead it would pick up your uh, blood, ox blood oxygenation level, your blood pressure and your pulse, uh, and that would be translated to effectively a little graphic bar um, at, the top of the, uh, at the top of the HUD that would tell you critical information about your, your, your bioscience. So again, trying to keep it as, as simple as possible. Again, that's achievable via there's two there's two methods. One it well three actually three methods. One is by some you know the, the same sort of types of pads that I was, I'm using for the um, the muscle detection uh, detection for um, muscle impulses motor motor impulses to be translated to digital signal to be sent off to the articulation system. Uh, so that can be done basically on the chest. Um, the alternative to an actual chip in situ would be just the pads and oops, just the pads and the um, the wires that pick up those pickups and pick up the pickups and translate that to the system. Or the third is um, like those little devices you get put on your fingertip when you go into hospital. They detect your blood oxygenation, um, pulse, and um, blood pressure. So use something like that scale it down break the maybe maybe buy one take it apart and use just the components and put that inside the glove or whatever um and you have the same effect so that's kind of somehow that's that's what i'm thinking as far as as hud functionality um with the hololens going forward and obviously the flip side to that is there are okay bearing in mind this is the, the idea behind the project is to reverse engineer a lot of this technology um and the HoloLens is three and a half thousand pounds. So, um, and there are some, there are some limitations with the HoloLens. Like it's not got a, it's not got as big a field of view as perhaps some other uh, some some VR headsets have, um, some mixed reality headsets have. Um, so there are some limitations, but the fact that it's a it's an all in one, there's, the computational system is built in. It's literally untethered. It's it's its own unit. 
Um, you don't have, it, have to have it linked to anything. Meanwhile, with most VR headsets, you need a computer with it um, in order to get the best out of it. Uh, which would imply then I'd have to build a computer into Mjolnir, which... Considering how much is already going into Mjolnir, that's, it's a bit of a tall order. But, like I said, there are viable alternatives. I could revert back to the um, to the laser-based Pico projector idea, which is, obviously, I've still got the modules. They're still, you know, still available to me. The HoloLens itself actually uses a MEMS mirror Pico projector, laser-based Pico projector within, well, actually two of them, within the HoloLens. So it's the same technology. It's just um, with the laser-based Pico projector, obviously, these may offer slightly, slightly increased um, field of view. But the um, the problems that I encounter are this is the projector. There's no computational system with that. There's no operating system with that. There's no application systems with that. Uh, there's no peripheral devices to that. So I would have to develop all of that, as well as implementing the optics and stuff that would be required in order to have my own bespoke HUD systems. Meanwhile, we've got the Hololens, three and a half thousand pounds, and it's an all-in-one. It's, it's a job done kind of situation trying to you know trying to keep it simple but that's not to say that down the line when we reverse engineer this this isn't a viable alternative because this is a viable alternative uh, absolutely i will be looking into using laser-based pico projectors um for for a, he a heads up display for glasses you know your, your own glasses could display on the inside of the uh, glasses via a refraction membrane which is still you know keeping safe with my whiskey <laughs> so um that's that's a viable alternative to revert back to the laser-based Pico projector. Um, on top of that, I could I could just go to like a basic augmented reality headset, you know, with like an LCD LCD display. But there are still issues with it. Like again, there's no computational systems. You need to you know you need to plug these headsets into a computer. I'd need to have a computer on board with Mjolnir. Um, it would necessitate me having to re redevelop all of those systems that would be that the HUD would be relying on. Um, plus the computer, plus you know integrating the headset in to the uh, the helmet. That's going to drive up cost. And it's again, I've got the Hololens. It's reinvent. It's kind of reinventing the wheel. Um, and I've got a distinct a distinct impression the quality might be sacrificed as a consequence, um, just due to the, the the fidelity of laser based projection versus an LCD display. Um, another alternative would be to do uh, to, to change the helmet design completely so at the moment i'm going with the, the mark 6 helmet design um i could go for the gungnir or the argus or the engineer variant which is basically the ones with the with no visor it's it's, it's just a blast plate um and with that i could use a, a, a virtual reality headset or a, or a, um, a cross reality headset so i could use something like the um the what is it called the varjo the Vajo X XR3, but again we're talking nine. That's nine thousand pounds on its own. Um, it's, I think it still needs a, comp a computational system. Again, any any VR headset that like the HTC Vive, it needs a computational system. Um, I could go cheaper, and I could just use like your basic like VR headset that you put like a phone into, um, and then use the phone camera as the as the visual overlay. I've done that before. I've done that with a, and uh, with a with a very cheap. I think the headset itself was um, $15.99 off of Amazon. I put my phone into it, installed an app that basically gives you the camera view. So it, pa it passes through the camera view and puts it into stereoscopic view. Um, and you can see the world around you. Um, and But you're seeing it through a visor, effective, or through a headset. Uh, that could work. But again, the quality wasn't great You know when I did it. I mean, yeah, I did it four or five years ago. Maybe some of the technology might have come on since. But... It, I don't know if it will if, if it will give the quality I want. If I was going to do something like that, I want to go whole hog and use, say, like a HTC Vive or an Oculus or um, another VR headset and do like a proper Gungnir helmet. But let's let's be honest. If I was going to do something like that, I'd send that helmet to like Hidden Xperia because I know how much he likes Gungnir. Um, so really, as things stand, the Hololens two at the moment is the best option. Um, again, I haven't ruled out the Hol. Uh, they, they are doing the the Gungnir. You know, VR headset is certainly certainly not something I've ruled out down the line, um, but uh, but in the meantime, yeah, it's the Hololens and the Mark VI style helmet, um, which brings me neatly to the Mark VI helmet. So where we are with the printing. 
So for those who um, who weren't aware, I was originally going to be printing the Mark IV helmet, um, mainly because it more closely represented the goals of the project. Uh, that's changed. I'm now doing um, the Mark VI, uh, um, Mark VI Gen Three helmet, which is the Halo Infinite helmet that we see Chief wearing, and. Um, that's mainly because it's more relevant at the moment, but also there's a little bit more space that's that's um, available inside of the helmet. Um, it's more instantly recognisable as a Halo helmet. I mean, people would see the Mark IV and they, they'll look at it and go, oh, that's a Spartan's helmet. But let's be honest, the Mark VI is the Spartan helmet. Um, so the model itself was provided by, who I'm currently only known as the Maker, uh, on Twitter, so he's he's making his own cosplay um, Gen 3 suit, and it's he's done phenomenally good work um, at, at modelling the the entire suit. Um, but he provided he was kind of to provide the um, the, the the model for the helmet, um, and I'm I'm okay. I'm I'm okay with modelling, 3D modelling, and 3D CAD software. But um, he's evidently a damn sight more talented than I am. So he upscaled and, and made some tweaks to the model um, based on, on the difference in our size. So he's, he's 5'11", I'm 6'4", so some, some accommodation needs to be made there. And obviously I've got a slightly different shaped head than he does. So different accommodations need to be made with the, with the model. But the model was provided by him and then I sliced it into four, four segments. Front left, front right, rear left and rear right. Um, and I'm printing that at the moment on my uh, my Anycubic Mega X um, filament 3D printer in PLA, and that isn't the end result. That is not the end product. Um, I'm not just making a very expensive cosplay. I'm aiming on making as accurate as humanly possible to the law, Mjolnir with modern technology. The only reason I'm printing in filament to start with is because I'd rather make mistakes. Um, I'd rather mess up on a filament model, trying to get things fitted and everything to work cohesively together, than to spend out the large amount of money that will be required in order to make a titanium helmet and mess that up. So this is prototype phase. This, that's kind of the point of, of filament 3D printers. That's the point of making plastic components is for prototyping. So I've printed the front left and front right. No, sorry, the front left and rear left I'm printing the right at the moment outside and I've bonded them together and this is the result so far no other treatments whatsoever I've not I've not polished this I've not I've not done anything other than remove the um, the support that was needed um, and glue them together that's it so we got one whole half of the helmet and like I say you know imagine the other half is in place it would go down perfectly and fit sort of just so 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 it's it's good. It fits. You know, it covers everything it needs to cover. What's really good is that, as I demonstrated in these pictures that I've posted everywhere on on um, on um, social media, which I'm probably sure you're already aware of, it fits, um, or rather, the hollow lens fits within the helmet perfectly. So. Now I've got the HoloLens on. There we go. So that's HoloLens in situ. And if I just take the helmet and position. Now allowances need to be made here because we've got a camera in the center here. We've got infrared sensors here. And we've got spatial cameras on um, on the top of the of the brim of the um, display here. The, one, the ones in the sort of more towards the middle. They're forward facing stereoscopic. And then we've got these two on the edges which face outwards, that's peripheral. So that's in order for the HoloLens to be able to scan its environment and understand spatially where it is, okay? So that goes on there and you notice that basically perfectly in line with where this nose guard is, that lines up perfectly with my nose but also allows a little bit of clearance between me and the HoloLens. It lines up perfectly at the brim of the helmet here in regards to the HoloLens itself. So that allows a little bit of space for the visor to come in. However, the visor, some considerations need to be made. So the visor of the helmet, I've got the, um, I've got the legendary edition Halo 3 helmet here. Um, it was sat here. So 
the visor between Halo Infinite and, and Halo 3 actually doesn't differ massively. It's still got the same aesthetic kind of look to it. Now, you notice this it is sort of embossed, but in the game it was kind of more, it wasn't embossed per se, it was just kind of more of a surface detail. So where these pieces are here at the top, either side, line up strikingly well with where these peripheral cameras are and obviously in the middle here I'll, I can just I can make allowances anyway so the idea is that we'll make the we'll make the um, the, the visor and we'll put the, the, the lovely gold foil on it so it looks you know gold as it should um, but those bits at the top there will be missing um, to allow because I noticed with testing it with a with a motorcycle um, visor that I've got I noticed that these cameras and the um, the camera in the center here and the infrared sensors have struggled to see outside of the of the visor because of the polarization because of the tint so that need allowances need to be made there so case in point like i say it fits when it's down it fits perfectly within the visor space there and you know we've got if i could show you the back i can show you it in the render but where effectively this piece is here which is where the ai data chip would be that lines up perfectly with the adjustment knob at the back there for the strap of the HoloLens to adjust its fit. So the symmetry between the two designs here, it's, it's, it's eerie. It's almost like the HoloLens was made to go inside of a Halo helmet, which is, I suppose, not outside of the boundaries of possibility. I mean, the HoloLens, it's Microsoft. Halo, owned by 343 Industries, who in turn is owned by Microsoft. It's a Microsoft IP. The HoloLens has appeared in the Become trailer. Just seems to me that I like the symmetry. I like the symmetry. Very, very pleased with that. Now, obviously, there is a lot of stuff that needs to be done to this helmet. So, chief among them, we need to be able to fit the HoloLens inside of it. Now, that can involve um, a plethora of different arrangements of doing things we can just have it like strapped in or connected in with you know sort of loop connectors that will just hold it loosely in place we can integrate it i could in theory take the hololens apart and actually attach it to various parts of the of the helmet um i could even build an, an internal structure effectively that the so this would be the the armor plate of the helmet although i'd probably section it up into smaller component pieces um and that can be then connected onto this under this this substructure, um, and the substructure itself would then carry the Hololens and all the other additional components within it. Might be a viable way to go, but at the moment we're going to go with is, is keeping it as simple as possible. So we're going to have to find a way to retrofit the Hololens inside. We're going to need breathing systems to be put in, so like the panel here where the the hose would be, that's going to be removed so that I can have a 35 millimeter outer diameter, 25 millimeter inner diameter hose with a HEPA filter, high, um, high efficiency par um, particulate arrestant filter inside, as Mjolnir has. Um, that will effectively pull air in from this vent here. So this vent will need to be taken out. That will pull air in, pump it through the, um, through the hose um, via these lovely little 25 millimeter inline fans so they'll actually fit up inside of the tube which is great that'll pump air to the mouth so i can breathe it in and then when i breathe out it'll take the carbon dioxide and pump it out of the, of the opposing side uh, that's mainly to reduce the fogging on the inside of the visor but also just helps with general ventilation um, as far as ventilation in general the hololens itself doesn't actually produce a, a, an immense amount of heat but um for for user comfort cooling would be required or, or, or preferable so i'm looking at potentially opening up um this little piece in the center of the visor uh, of the of the, um, of the uh, helmet brim um, as an intake port for air to be circulated through the helmet and then pumped out somewhere at the back here possibly even these vents here um, so then that'll pump out of the back and at the side here where we see this little vent here that will be there will be a um, a high um, a high quality microphone array positioned there and that will connect to a um, speaker array on the inside of the helmet so you can actually hear outside of the helmet it doesn't sound like muffled like you're wearing ear defenders um and there will also be a microphone built into um the inside of the helmet with a speaker that i'll position underneath the mouth guard here i'll probably like maybe 
lift this away so there's a you know a way for the sound to actually travel out um, so that when you talk you can talk outside of the helmet and the voice comes from where you'd expect the voice to come from because there was an idea at one point for, for me to put the, the speakers on the shoulders so when you spoke that's where the voice came out of but it, it I don't know it seems more intuitive for the voice to actually come out of the mouth of the armor <sighs> so yeah there's a lot of other components that need to go into this helmet um, to get it um, to get it where I need it to be but once the model has been fully adapted and we've had these panels removed and the, maybe the internal structure we've sectioned it up in such a way um, and it's basically you know as good as it can be and all the components can fit inside of it and I can put it on and take it off and everything's fine then the finished model will be handed over to a contact I have um, who will then 3d print this helmet in titanium um, via a direct metal laser a laser sintering printer um, and do some post-processing to, to really make that helmet sort of stand out and then it will literally just be a case of transplanting all the components from the prototype over to the finished product and then I will be in possession of the only fully titanium fully functional Mjolnir helmet with an integrated HUD in existence yeah but that's going to be pretty cool so um Again, this this product is being funded via GoFundMe. Uh, we are about we're just over eleven thousand pounds worth of um, of donations so far, which has just helped immeasurably to getting all of the stuff that I need to do this together. I've been privately funding it for for, for a, a, the longest time. I've been researching and developing sort of how how this can even happen for the past fifteen years, um, and and because of your your immense help, this is now happening. So. Keep watching the videos, keep liking, keep subscribing, um, keep sharing, uh, and if you can donate to the to the GoFundMe, please do because it helps keep pushing this forward. And um, when I when the second I, I've spoken to these people in regards to the environment suit and, and what the what the um, what the situation is with that, I'll be straight back on here and I'll be letting you guys know about what's going on. So thanks again, everyone. Thank you for your support. Um, Take it, easy, take it easy, everyone, and find peace in the domain.